Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics. From reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. And today, they're taking us right back to Jason Todd. I'm Sasha and today we're going to meet Jason Todd. Again, we're going to look at his second origin, the non-Dick origin. Dick Grayson, that is. A little gutter humor to start your day off right. Or end it, or whatever time of day it is. Or night. We've talked about how he died. We've talked about how he came back. We've talked about why people hated him and how people came to love him. And now, we're going to look at the storyline that, for many people of that era, started the hate. It's time to get on the hate train. All aboard. Oh dear. I am filming at night and I'm two coffees in. I need to be stopped. If you like looking back at the tangled web that is comic book history, hit that like button. So this is Batman 408, titled The New Adventures of Batman. This happened post-Crisis on Infinite Earths, the massive DC-wide event that at the time collapsed the multiverse, folding all of DC into one universe in an attempt to clean up continuity. A failed attempt. They would also use this as an opportunity to sneak in some retcons and change some origins, tweak them as they liked, and this is what happened to Jason. He would find himself having his origin retold, despite only having appeared in Batman 357 and only being Robin since 366. Also, fun fact, this issue followed directly after Frank Miller's Batman Year One, that famous gritty retelling of Batman's first years. The one that made Selina a dominatrix. Cuz. And people loved that one, so DC was thinking they loved the grit. Give them more grit. Give the people what they seem to want. This cover is now iconic. Batman coming upon a young Jason stealing the tires off the Batmobile. I love this cover, what can I say? It's simple but significant. Our comic about meeting Jason Todd opens on Batman fighting the Joker with Dick Grayson, with the issue being called, Did Robin Die Tonight? Just a full punch to the face of darkness. <clears throat> it's a punch like that? That's why I don't fight crime. <laughs> Take that. The Joker has stolen a diamond necklace, which he's wearing. It looks nice, by the way. And while bantering with Batman, he turns around and shoots Robin through the shoulder, who falls off the building. Batman manages to catch him with the bat rope. Bat rope? What am I? The Adam West show? Bat rope. Bat jet. Bat shark repellent. So Batman is really concerned about this, but also wants to stop the Joker before he kills again, even though he already has. Can you hang on, son? I have a madman to deal with. Don't call him son where people can hear. It doesn't really matter, though, because the Joker is waxing poetic about, if I shoot Batman, then who will I play with? Batman takes out the Joker, but Robin was more hurt than he let on. He's collapsed on some scaffolding. A helicopter was filming all of this, and their takeaway was... Did Robin just die? If it bleeds, it leads. News at 11. And so launches a media frenzy about whether Robin died and the ethics of Batman having a kid sidekick. Well, Teen Dick, Dick is in the Teen Titans at this point, really more like the adult Titans because most of them are in their 20s about midway through. Most, not all, road hitting membership, ages change, nebulous continuity, timey-wimey. Anyway, Bruce is concerned about what happened to Dick and he decides that really Dick shouldn't be Robin anymore. And he's like, this is no place for a child which hurts Dick's feelings. And he's all like, I'm a man. And Bruce is all, son, I'm sorry, you are a man now. Man enough to accept my decision. <laughs> Felt it. He then basically tells him he can't be Robin anymore, and we get a cool panel foreshadowing Nightwing for non-Titans readers. The thing is, they don't leave it terribly here. At least not on Bruce's side. They're smiling, they're talking, they're kinda chummy, but this would be a wound that would stay for a while, not just with Dick, but with readers as well. Partially because of what's gonna happen in this issue and the one following it. So Batman keeps fighting crime without Robin, which further fuels the rumors that he's dead. Commissioner Gordon is even like so... Is he dead? Do I have to call somebody? And Batman's like, no, not literally, but figuratively, yes. I work alone. I am the knight. Oh, sorry. I work alone. I am the knight. We then get some Bruce dating Vicki Vale stuff, which was a thing at the time, which I only bring up because she says some awful things to him. I think a man who was orphaned by gunfire only to inherit a fortune built on munitions has a right to feel a little guilty. Firstly, Munitions. I'm not up on that part of Wayne Tech history. Maybe I'm missing something, or does she just think that she's on a date with Tony Stark? Also, telling a man whose parents were murdered in front of him as a child that he should feel guilty about it. 
I'm so offended on his behalf. And then she also disses Batman and is like, he's making the city worse with his violence. He's creating criminals. Why is he dating her? Anyway, none of this has to do with Jason, but it does amplify Bruce's guilt complex. And it gets him thinking about Crime Alley and wishing, despite all the charities he's on, that he could do more for the lower income areas of Gotham. And it sets him about admiring people who do. People like Ma Gunn, who set up a school in Crime Alley. Ma Gunn's School for Boys, 100% legit. How could anybody with a name like Ma Gunn be evil? Especially not in Gotham, especially not working on Crime Alley. It's all on the up and up. That night he goes to Crime Alley and it's his parents' death anniversary. So hold on, Vicky said all of that stuff to him on the day that his parents died. I don't even have words. I'ma need a minute. Batman is depressed and wonders why he keeps coming back to Crime Alley every year. Does it really honor my parents' memory? After all, the next day, the next night, crime returns to the alley while I'm busy fighting larger evils. Again, he admires people who make a more permanent difference. So he goes to visit Ma Gunn to admire her school before patrolling, which leads to one of my favorite panels. Here it is. Hi, Batman, nice night for a stroll. Gentlemen. It's so good. Oh look, Batman. None of this, he's an urban legend. Does he really exist for the people of Crime Alley? They see him, he's just walking around. When he gets back to his car, he sees that the wheels have been stolen and it's just so absurd that it actually makes him start laughing. Jason, who was jacking the tires, returns for the last one, only to be confronted by an amused Batman. So Jason whaps him with a tire iron. Try to catch me, you big boob. Is that how streetwise kids sound? Try to catch me, you big boob. That sounds better. Batman follows him and finds that he's living alone in a rundown apartment and that he's smoking because he's bad to the bone. Also in the process of talking to him, he realizes that Jason has a huge chip on his shoulder, but he ends up finding all of this endearing and it activates his protect must help instinct. So he takes the boy to Mont Guns, thinking that this will be a better life for him than, you know, squatting in this apartment. However, at the end of this issue, it's revealed, shock, awe, she's not a good person. And the school, is a school of evil. Say it ain't so. Meeting Jason part two. Just another kid on Crime Alley. Jason tries to escape from the house, but to no avail. Meanwhile, Bruce can't stop thinking about Jason and decides to investigate his mom, who Jason said was dead, but Bruce isn't so sure. While he's leaving, he runs into Vicki Vale, who proceeds to be awful to him again. She's trying to get him to pose for pictures for her Crime Alley human interest piece, but he's not really interested and is trying to back out. She's a reporter, by the way. I think this was supposed to be like his Lois. Is Lois this awful to Clark? I don't know, I mean, but then Superman was really awful back for a time, I don't know. Anyway, this feels worse. I don't like to play with my role down here. It's private. Because your parents were killed in this area? Do you hate him? Who talks to their kind of boyfriend like this? Hey, remember how your parents are dead? Do you feel guilty about that? Cause uh, you should. Back to the school, Ma Gun is teaching them to be hoodlums and all about guns and drinking booze, the whole shebang. So Jason manages to escape. And meanwhile, Batman is using all his resources, both as Bruce Wayne and Batman, to try and track down Jason Todd's family. And he manages to find his father, but it looks like he was killed by Two-Face. So Batman goes out patrolling and sees a man whose tires have been stolen. And he figures, there's only one boy who steals tires in all of Gotham, Jason Todd. So he realizes that Jason must have escaped. He goes and finds him in the apartment and is like, what are you doing here? Why did you do this? Why would Jason do this? Jason tells him that he's not going back to the school and that the school's a front. It's training criminals and that they have a big heist plan that night. Despite appearing skeptical, Batman actually goes to check it out. And while he's there, he ends up getting overwhelmed. But it turns out that Jason followed him and he helps him out. He helps him stop the entire thing. Batman is really impressed and Jason is happy that he was listened to because he was coming to try and stop the crime with or without Batman. So as the two are leaving, Bruce offers Jason a ride in his car. Don't get into cars with strangers. I mean, I guess unless it's Batman, but maybe not because you're gonna end up a sidekick. You know, if you turn me over to the social worker as well, the chances of a kid my age finding a decent home, why did he get Southern? The chances of a kid my age finding a decent home are slim to none. Why can't I say finding? Finding, finding. Slightly Southern Jason Todd. Don't bet on it, Robin. Robin? Robin? So. He's Robin now, after one team up fight and meeting Batman twice. Okay, real talk, this story has some highs and some lows, but I really like this origin for Jason. It makes him different than Dick and it sets up a different dynamic between him and Batman as a result. 
and it also lays the groundwork for him eventually going too far, naturally, even though initially that wasn't the plan. It plays up like he was an impulsive poor choice for Robin, but a genuine one. But at the same time, in the context of the time this was released, oh boy can I understand why this made some people hate him. Firstly, by having Batman take him on as Robin, it completely undermines the rationale for why he got rid of slash fired slash told Dick he couldn't be Robin anymore. It's all, oh, it's too dangerous for my 18, 19, 20, young adult slash pretty much out of teenage dumb son, but it's okay for this much younger kid. I found this kid on the street and I gave him your name. It made it feel like Dick meant nothing or that he wasn't that significant. And also the taking of the Robin name, which was very special to Dick. It wasn't just a random name at this point and just applying it to Jason. Again, making it seem like Robin wasn't something special. It was something that anybody could be, which has now become kind of the thing. But at the time, this was shocking. Also, the two that Jason had rubbed some people the wrong way. And I get that. They were like, we don't need this bratty Robin. And they felt that a criminal shouldn't be Batman's partner, that it undermined his mission and what he stood for. Also, it just feels really abrupt. He's barely in 408 until the end, and then he's only in 409 a little bit more, and then bam, he's Robin. Even with all that said, though, I do still feel like people were too hard on him. Although, different times, different perspectives. Although, looking back, he might not have been as unpopular as people thought. Again, it's kind of hard to gauge. I think that what I like the most about this are the little things, like how Jason makes Bruce laugh in Crime Alley on Maximum Brood Night. That's a big deal. I also like that he genuinely wants to help him. It brings out that softer human side, which is what a Robin is supposed to do. There is a balance, a counterbalance thing going on. And despite how different Jason is, he still performs that function. It's more like he makes Batman concerned about him though. It also ends up adding to the tragedy later on as Bruce slowly starts to realize that Jason isn't Dick and maybe he made a mistake, something that he starts to think even before the issues that lead up to his death. But yeah, I can acknowledge that the secret crime school is pretty weak as a plot point and also Vicky's just awful in these. She's not that awful all the time. I don't know what was going on in this arc. So what do you think? Do you like this origin? Are you not sure? Do you feel like you're too far removed from it to have a proper opinion? Hashtag not my Jason. <laughs> Tell me all your thoughts and feelings down below. And while you're down there, please do all of the YouTube things like share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. I'm Sasha. Thanks so much for watching Casually Comics, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.